What's up, everybody? It's Andrew from Collective Intelligence, and today we have 15 minutes to take a look at Ableton Live 11. If this is your first time looking at Ableton, don't worry, take my hand. I'm going to walk you through everything step by step so you get a great understanding of the software. Let's take a look. So this is how Ableton looks when you open a fresh Ableton Live set. I'm going to press F11 on my keyboard and just show you the top menu bar here. I can go File, and I can go New Live Set, and this is what will open up. So if you're not actually seeing this screen, go ahead and do that now so that you're looking at what I'm looking at. And we're going to start off by talking about the browser window, okay? The browser window is this section here that you can see on the screen and it's got a search box up the top here it's also got uh, on the left hand side here collections categories and places which we'll talk about and then if we were to select one of these categories then we can see there's subfolders inside of here as well okay so this little triangle is going to drop it away so that we don't see it all, so we can collapse a browser and have it out of our field of view, or we can click it to expand it out and have it on our screen. And generally, I'm always producing with this on my screen. Um, but if you find that you've got quite a small screen, maybe sometimes you'll drop it away. So collections. Collections is a way that you can basically um, quickly access your favorite uh, instruments or devices or anything like this. So the browser allows you to sort of browse through all of Ableton's inbuilt devices, uh, instruments, as well as any third-party plugin that you may have installed. So collections, you can see I've got a couple of uh, different devices here under synths, and these are just so I can quickly access the ones that I use all the time, right? So collections, we can set that up so we got basically like shortcuts to our go-to devices. Down here, we've got sound. So these are all built into Ableton Live and I have Ableton Live Suite. So I basically have everything that Ableton has made in my version of Ableton. You may not have all of this if you're using different versions of Ableton, but you will have uh, some typical sounds like the drum sounds. Some of these will definitely be loaded in like the 909 and et cetera, et cetera. So under sounds, I can go to uh, a subcategory, say pad, and then I can select a pad and I can actually audition the sound and hear it. Now, if you're not actually hearing anything right now, you may not have your audio set up correctly, or you may not have this little headphone button selected, okay? So this needs to be blue in order for playback to occur, but you may also need to go into your preferences by pressing control and comma and setting up your audio drivers correctly. And I've got a video that is going to show up in the top right hand corner now for you to check out how you can set up best your audio preferences. So we've got drum kits as well. All right, we've got instruments, so synthesizers. And if we found something that we liked, we could simply just click it um, and drag and drop it into Ableton here in order for that instrument to ba basically be loaded into our project and we could start using it. Okay, we got plugins. Um, so these are third party devices that uh, another manufacturer has made and you can load them up inside Ableton. So it expands the capability of what Ableton can do. And you may be familiar with some plugins like Serum or the Fab Filter bundles or um, things like that. Here we've got audio effects. These are all built into Ableton. So these are Ableton live effects, uh, MIDI effects as well. Um, and so on and so forth. Cool. And down here we've got places. So this is places on my computer. So I can add a new folder. I can search for something on my computer, uh, like a folder where I'm saving all my samples. And then I could select that folder and then it would drop in here. And you can see that I've actually already done this. I've got a sample folder and this has got all of the samples that I use. Okay. So that's collections, categories, and places inside of the browser window. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this part of the interface, okay? This big section here it takes up most of the screen. And this is either showing us Ableton's session view or Ableton's arrangement view. 
Okay, now the session view is what loads up by default. And you'll see that here I've got one, two, three, four Ableton Live tracks. And these two are Ableton Live audio tracks. These two are Ableton Live MIDI tracks. And if you would like an explanation on what audio on MIDI is, you can go ahead and click the video that's about to pop up in the right hand corner. And you can see my explanation for that. So you can understand the difference. Okay. So without going too deeply into what the session view is versus the arrangement view, I'm going to give you a brief sort of summary. And if you want to learn more, you can click up in the right hand corner now for my video explaining the arrangement view versus the session view. So here, we've got the session view and you can see everything is aligned vertically. And you can think of the session view as a place that you would come in Ableton to jam out ideas, to play loops over and over again, and to basically just improvise. You could perform live using this part of Ableton. This is where you can really, yeah, exercise your creativity and jam. Okay, so you're not, you're not really arranging a track, but you are performing a track here. Now, if I go ahead and press tab on my keyboard, or I press this button with the horizontal lines, then we jump over to Ableton's arrangement view. Now, the arrangement view is different. The arrangement view is like reading a book from left to right, and up the top here, you've got numbers that indicate the amount of bars that can currently be seen on the screen, and this is how you would arrange a track and you would basically put your cursor at the beginning, press spacebar to play, and you would listen to your track from start to finish and it would play through the progression that you've made. So quite different in theory to the arrangement, uh, sorry, to the session view. This is for people that are ready to finalize their track and set it in stone and then uh, basically get a finished product that plays from start to finish without you having to do anything except press play, okay? So there are the differences between the arrangement and session view summarized. And like I said, you can grab the video up there in order to see more in depth. I'm going to talk to you now about the titles that you can he see here in the, in the different uh, colors. So when you load in a new track, it's going to load in with a different color and you can load either audio tracks or um, MIDI tracks into Ableton Live, okay? And in this case, like I mentioned, we've got two of each and they've got colors. But if we want to rename this, we can right click and we can rename and then we can type drums in there, press enter. And now we've got a channel, a MIDI channel that's called drums. Over here, I could select this channel and I could go control R on my keyboard to rename. That's the shortcut. And I could say um, leads. Cool. And I could put some leads on that channel. Okay. So the numbers here indicate which number it is in terms of all of the Ableton Live tracks that are loaded. And you can also see that we've got the numbers here. Okay. So this is where we can color the track, rename the track, we can also duplicate it, copy it, delete it, etc, etc. This section here of the, the track strip is going to be the mixing section, okay? So we'll use an audio track for an example because it's got all of the features here. The three here is obviously indicating which track it is, it's the third track. If I click that, it disables the track. So if there was any audio playing on that track, I would no longer hear it. I need to have that activated in order to hear it. Next is the solo button. This would allow me to, if I had a complex arrangement with multiple things playing, I could just press solo and I'll just hear the leads. Um, this here is the record arm. If you would like to know how to record audio into Ableton Live, check out my video coming up now on how to record audio in the top right hand corner. Uh, we'll go into more detail about the record here as well as the record button up here. Okay. This is the volume of the particular Ableton Live track, okay? So the volume meters in Ableton work from negative infinity up to positive six decibels, okay? So that is how you can set the volume of the track. Um, and if you would like to learn more about how volume works, you can search plenty of videos on YouTube for finding out more about volume. Here we've got pan. So what panning is, is pan will move the sound either to the right speaker or the left speaker so that you can hear it in one ear 
or the other. And if I quickly just grab a sample for you to listen to, uh, I'll grab this hat loop. I can click it from the browser window, drag and drop it onto the timeline. I can select it by clicking up on the title here and I can press spacebar to play it. I can pan it all the way to the right. Well, you're right. Not too sure what's happening to my audio there. Or I can pan it all the way to the left and you can just hear it on the left hand side. Right. Doing it again. Unsure exactly why it's bugging out there. But um, yeah, that pans it left or right. And then obviously you've got volume up and down. Okay. So here we've got send and returns. Okay. And we're not going to explain them in the scope of this video. So send and return channels, you can find more information in the right-hand corner now as my video comes up on what send and return channels are in Ableton Live 11. This section here is our ins and outs, okay? So this allows us to have audio coming in to Ableton. So let's say this microphone coming into Ableton and being recorded or something going out, okay? So maybe we were, we've made something inside Ableton and we actually want to spit it out and record it somewhere else or it could be in and out in Ableton, so it could be this channel is going to feed into this channel, right? So ins and outs can be going into the computer, out of the computer, or from one track to another inside of Ableton Live. If you would like to learn more about that, in the right-hand corner, I've got a video on ins and outs inside of Ableton Live. These buttons down here will turn on or off the certain parts of the interface. So this is going to turn off the ins and outs section. This is going to turn off the mix section and this is going to turn off the return channels so that we don't see them. This button here shows us the delays um, and this allows us to put delays on the track if we want to for whatever reason. So I'll bring those back into the interface so that we can see them. And now we've talked about everything that you can see here on the side of the screen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this clip that I've got and down the bottom here, what we've got is the device view window. Okay. So if uh, because I've selected this track, it also selects this channel. And if I had any devices on that channel, they would show up down here. Okay. They don't currently. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go audio effects and we're going to grab an EQ. We'll grab an EQ8 and we'll just drag and we'll drop it onto this channel. Okay. Here it is down here. So now if I click over here, and now I click back, you'll see, okay, the device shows up for any device that's on this Ableton Live track. And here I've got an Ableton Live audio clip. And if I have that audio clip selected, down here I have a tab that I can click that shows me the waveform, okay? So here I can see um, the hi-hats in their waveform. I can see a bunch of information over here about the waveform as well. And I'm able to toggle between these two windows down here in order to see the devices that would be on the Ableton Live track, as well as the audio clip that I've currently got selected. So if I click over here, now there's no longer a clip showing because no clip is selected, okay? So this works the same way on a MIDI track. If I double click, I make a Ableton Live MIDI clip. And this MIDI clip shows me the piano roll because a MIDI clip can contain um, notation information, so MIDI information, but in this case, it's in the form of the piano roll. And then if I click over on the tab, it would show me the instrument or the devices that I had loaded on this Ableton Live MIDI track, but currently I don't have anything loaded. Okay, so it's not going to show me anything. So it works the same as the audio tracks. I have to have the clip selected in order for its contents to show up on this tab. So the tab on the left-hand side always shows us the clip. The tab on the right-hand side always shows us the device information that we've got dropped on whichever particular Ableton Live track that we've got selected, audio or MIDI. Great. Okay, so that's what shows up down there. Finally, we're going to shoot through the top bar here, and we would have done the entire interface. Up here, I've got the ability to tap on this button in order to tap in a tempo. So if I've got a tempo in my head, I can tap it in. Otherwise here, I can either click on the tempo and type 140 BPM, press enter, and now my project is at 140 BPM. I can click the metronome here and press spacebar, 
and you can hear the metronome playing uh, at the timing that I've got selected here. This indicates that I'm using a project that's in 4-4 musical timing, and we won't talk about these other features in this video. They're beyond the scope of the video. This um, is where on the timeline I've got my cursor. So if I place it over here, you'll see it's at the beginning of the fifth bar, first beat, etc., etc. So the way that this is set up, and actually I should have shown you this down here. This is the info window. So anywhere you want, you can put your cursor over. And this tells us that the first number is beats. The second number is bars. Uh, sorry, other way around. First number is bars, second number is beats, third number is sixteenths. Okay, so it's talking about musical timing and the divisions, right? Um, here we've got play button, we've got the stop button, and then we've got record button. And remember, we'll talk about the record button in the record video. These features will also be talked about in the record video. Um, here we've got the loop. Okay, so I can select an area by click it, left clicking and dragging, and then I can go control L on my keyboard to enable the loop. You'll see that now that is looped. Okay, it's activated. I can click that to deactivate or activate. So the loop starts at the beginning of the 29th bar, the first beat and the first 16th of that bar, and it goes for four bars. Okay, so that's what these all indicate, and you can change it by doing that. Or I can just click on the end when it turns into that bracket, my cursor turns into that bracket, and I can drag it out and set the length that way as well. Cool. Here I've got the pencil tool. Um, we'll be going over the pencil tool when we're talking about MIDI. I'll show you all about that. And on this uh, button here, you can toggle this on and off. This lets you use your computer keyboard as a MIDI keyboard or like a piano keyboard, right? So you can turn that on and then you can press the, number, uh, the letters on your keyboard and you'll be playing notes. We've got key mapping here. So if we want to remap a key like the... L button on our keyboard to do something else inside Ableton, we can do that there. We've got MIDI mapping, so if we've got a MIDI controller and we want to map a control to do something else, we've got it there. And here we've got the CPU meter. This lets us know how much CPU our computer is using in order to run our project. Guys, that was Ableton Live 11 in 15 minutes or a little bit more. Hopefully you really enjoyed this video and you are encouraged to keep learning Ableton Live. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps me reach a wider audience. And if you want to learn more, please check out the videos that all popped up in the right hand corner of the screen that will go much deeper into Ableton Live. Thanks very much again, guys, and I'll see you in another video.